um, Phil Atkinson. He's been working with business information systems for 15 years with a career that it, um, expands across industry sectors like warehousing, barcoding and radio frequency picking and putting, labour demand planning, training systems and many other areas. He's a very approachable, knowledgeable business process consultant with strong software project management development experience. He says that it's been a privilege to provide business critical data and information management tools to organisations like Coca-Cola, Nintendo, Electronic Arts, Association of Chief Police Officers, Disney and many other businesses. His objective today is to share some of his experience in working with the police service and Coca-Cola on how removing manual data management from spreadsheets into systems has significantly reduced costs to organisations better managing, sharing and reporting on their data. So, over to you, Phil. Thanks, Nick. Just before I get into the presentation, I'd like to introduce Graham Armitage. Graham Armitage is a former inspector of West Yorkshire Police, and Graham's going to be delivering one of the case studies that I have for you uh, this morning. Now, I've been sitting at the back there watching the day, and I've enjoyed the day so far, um, but I'm going to stay over here a little bit because Mike's been walking back and forth going, they're moving around, they're moving around, they're moving around, so <laughs> I'm going to stay here because I don't want to face Mike's wrath. Okay, so my presentation this morning is about maximising operational efficiencies. Uh, in this case for uh, manufacturing distribution in the police service. And this is delivering this kind of technology in the modern uh, digital age. I'll get a little bit of background to who we are. Um, Target Information Systems is manned by people who've been working with the internet, pretty much from when the internet technology came along. I'm not going to go through in, in all these in details, but what we do is we come into businesses, we analyse your business processes, and then we deliver software solutions to meet those business needs. That's what the company does. Now, what's very different about our approach is we take the same technology that's driving Facebook and Google and eBay. And that kind of technology, you don't need to go on a training course to use. It's called Don't Make and Think. In the book also by a guy called Stephen Crook. What Stephen says is that when people arrive at a system to use that system, they don't really need to be trained to use it. So in the case of what we do as a company, is if you're, if you're a technician and you've got a job to do on the shop floor, that you log into a system, that system should tell you all the things that you need to do as a technician in that business. Equally, if you're the site operations director, you want to get in in the morning, and you want to see one of two things on your, on your screen when you log in. A nice big yellow smiley face with a big smile on it, or a red face being angry something's gone wrong in the facility. So it's about how you manage your business, your data from your business, and actually do this kind of reporting upstream of that. Okay. The reason why I'm here today <coughs> me, is that Richard and I met some time ago, and Richard um, got some uh, visibility and some work I've been doing for Coca-Cola Enterprises. I've been working for Coca-Cola Enterprises now for three years, and in that time, I've delivered into the largest bottling plant, a labour demand planning tool, and also into their uh, Euro Euro uh, UK supply chain, and now looking to roll this out into the rest of Europe. So we, it's quite a strong business case that I'll be talking about today. So over the last two years, I've been privileged to be going into companies like these and talking to them about how they manage their labour demand planning to meet output demands. And those that are actually starred are companies who have actually, I've actually taken these companies into Coca-Cola because one thing Coca-Cola really like to do is they really like to share best practice. They like to get other companies in to see their business so that they, in return, get to look at your business. So if anybody here wants to see how they're doing this in Coca-Cola, have a chat with me afterwards, I might be able to get you to have a look. So these conversations in places like Cadbury's and Hobbes and Haribo, now, when I came into the food manufacturing sector, which was just, just a little over three years ago, I was expecting when Cadbury come in in the morning that they just press a magic button and everything works automatically. <laughs> that was my expectation. But what we found was that was not the case. There was an awful lot of manual information management taking place in organisations, including their, their companies, and how they actually deliver their product into the warehouse to meet customer demands. Okay, so I'm going to start talking about back office enterprise <coughs> resource planning tool. Is there anybody who doesn't know what an ERP system is? Oh dear. <laughs> okay. What? 
What I found <coughs> from going to these organisations is that many of them have some kind of back office system. It'll be SAP, it'll be JB Edwards, it'll be System 21. These are ERP systems. What those ERP systems are doing for the business, and doing it very well, is they're taking the sales, the sales order processes. They do that very well. They also do very well purchase ledger. They manage some of the supply chain an element within that business. The ERP system will do uh, an element of uh, the payroll, or it will do it very well, or it might not do it at all. But I found over my last 15 years of working in information management systems that the most accurate piece of data in any business is the payroll information. Because if, you, if your salary is a penny out, what's the first thing you do? Hello, it's not. So that's, that's, the, kind of, that's the kind of things that I'm experiencing. They also tend to do an element of human resources. Uh, they'll manage people information, national insurance numbers, manage the pension, and, do, and, and again, do that quite well. They'll do credit control and they'll also perform some of the financials, possibly holding the bill of materials. It might do some forecast, it might, it might do some data analysis. In all the time I've worked with information management systems, I've never gone into an organisation that they've said they're entirely happy with their ERP system. Nobody. Does anybody here like to have a conversation because I haven't experienced it so far? Coca-Cola Enterprises are in their ninth year of a three-year project to implement SAP. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about this bit of the puzzle, which is the sales come in at the front end, so you've got your sales and marketing taking place at the top, the orders are coming in left, right and centre, uh, all the bills are laying out, everything's been sorted out from the ERP. But what happens with the manufacturing manager? How does the data get out of here to the manufacturing manager? In my experience, from people like Cadbury's and Haribo and Coca-Cola, it arrives on the back of a fag packet. Anybody in manufacturing here might have experienced data arriving on the back of a fag packet. It might have been on, uh, in an Excel file, in a printout. I've seen a printout come into somebody's office and it was this big. <laughs> There's your production plan for the next seven days. I've seen people walk into a production planning office like this. Big whiteboard. Monday we're doing this, and Tuesday we're doing this, and actually write the data down on a whiteboard. There's lots of examples of this. I have actually seen, in one organisation, the data coming out of here and into, automatically, to, where's, where's it built? Into Microsoft Project. And I've seen it done very well too, so it's not all, all bad out there. So the orders arrive into manufacturing, and the manufacturing manager with his team has to get that product into the warehouse to get it out the back door. And they face all kinds of challenges in the warehouse over how they do bulk storage, how they do their picking, putting, all those sort of things. The manufacturing manager's team then start to rely on this sort of technology, MRP, uh, recipes and supply chain, in order to get the supply chain in place to get the products, to get them into the warehouse. In Coca-Cola, when it arrives in manufacturing, it arrives as an Excel spreadsheet out of the SAP system. And straight away, an army I would describe any more than 50 people in army are people suddenly going to into legacy systems to start to plan that function of delivering that stuff into the warehouse. It's a very intensely uh, labour intensive uh, process. <coughs> so these are some of the challenges the manufacturing manager has to get stuff to the warehouse to, to fulfil it and they're having to deal with a lot of legacy information management. <coughs> Often under the direct control of the manufacturing manager he has materials he has the equipment, the plant, and the people to deliver that. And my piece of puzzle, uh, the puzzle today is very much around this part of it, which is people. Now, my involvement in people planning, related to my planning, started five years ago. And it started five years ago with an engagement with West Yorkshire Police. So what I'm going to ask Graham to do is, is uh, to talk you through how moving from Excel and manual information management helps the police force to deliver resources to achieve their outputs. Okay. My name is Graham Armitage. I was a, an inspector in West Yorkshire Police and a temporary chief inspector as well for a while. Um, my involvement with, uh, with Phil and with Phil's company was when I worked in the logistics department of West Yorkshire Police. Now logistics is about moving people and equipment to the places where they're required to police. Um, if you imagine, a little bit of background, there are 10,000 people working for West Yorkshire Police. There are actually a few more than that. Uh, just over half of them are warranted police officers, the rest are police staff. All of them have skills. Many of them have skills that can be deployed out onto the street. Our job in logistics was to make sure that the right people were in the right place at the right time. 
for events that were not everyday events. So there are 11 divisions within West Yorkshire Police. We would police stations the headquarters for one of the divisions and that division has a chief superintendent responsible for day-to-day -day policing. If there's a football match down in Elland Road, that belongs to another division and is not his or her interest. So we in logistics had to make sure that if that division policing Elland Road didn't have enough staff, that we drew enough staff from around the force to make sure that we could properly police that event. We used to use the fag packet. Surprisingly, or unsurprisingly, we fairly much used to use the fag packet. Lots of decisions about how we were going to do it, who was going to do it in terms of the specialisms, but when it actually came down to getting the right people in the right place, with the right skills, to do that job at the right time, at the right cost, we used to use an Excel spreadsheet. That Excel spreadsheet was controlled by one person within the organisation, and that person had his own agenda. That, that spreadsheet was written by him, and it was so complicated nobody else understood it. In the whole organisation, all the other 10,000 people, he was the only one who understood it. Um, what Phil did, and it was commissioned before I went into logistics, but what Phil and his team were able to do was take that spreadsheet and actually open it up, make it user friendly, make it um, appropriate and make it do far more things than this spreadsheet used to do. We as a police service were actually held hostage by this one individual. Um, he had friends so he quite actually liked the planning inspector that worked for uh, uh, City and Holbeck who had Elland Road so he used to favour them he didn't really like, he liked football, but he didn't really like Huddersfield Town. This is how bad it was. <laughs> so we wouldn't favour Huddersfield Town. We couldn't see through. We, we could see through it, but we couldn't, we couldn't work that out. Uh, we couldn't make it work for us. So Phil came in, Phil and his team came in and very, very quickly produced a system for us that allowed me as the planning inspector within logistics to organise and plan with my team it allowed divisional commanders to see how many people we were abstracting from them and what impact that would have on them to the, in their day-to-day -day policing. It, it allowed us to project that in the future. It allowed us to even allowed us to do things like um, um, putting in possible events or putting in imaginary events and see how that would impact on every division. So uh, as you can imagine, that had a big impact on the way we did business and it also allowed us to open up and be transparent in our dealings with all the divisional commanders. That's how it started. Um, some, of the, some of the gains uh, later and some of the projects that it was used on later, um, I was the search coordinator for the Shannon Matthews uh, abduction, I don't know whether you remember it, in Dewsbury, um, and we actually used that to resource, in terms of staff and equipment, uh, monitor and manage uh, all the people that worked on search and on community reassurance for the whole of that project. Um, it's allowed just a couple of people to actually manage the whole of the rest of the forces events uh, as well as doing the Shannon Matthews event with as little fuss as possible. And you can imagine um, uh, an incident like that is very dynamic, very fast moving. You can't wait for lots and lots of input and you can't teach extra people how to use systems it's got to be very intuitive, it's got to be very fast, and it's got to do what you want now. Otherwise you end up wasting a lot of time, a lot of money, and cause a lot of frustration. That's just one example of, of, of what we did with the system. Um, there are lots of events in West Yorkshire, thousands of events in West Yorkshire, and all these needed to be coordinated. Um, there are things like the Chapel Town Festival, the Leeds, uh, Leeds Festival, the Chapel Town Carnival, and these all fall around the bank holiday. Another thing that we were able to do was we were able to predict the effect of these events um, and the impact on West Yorkshire Police's ability to provide its policing service while at the same time implement some training for new radios, airwave radios. Um, there had been a, a decree that we would train throughout the whole of 2006 or 7 um, and nothing but nothing would stop that training. With this system we were able to predict that if they stuck to that decision over the bank holiday period when we had these events, then policing in West Yorkshire, normal policing in West Yorkshire will grind to a halt. And that was the only time that they actually stopped the training for that period. And it was only because we were very clearly, using Phil's system, able to evidence how that, that was going to impact. 
Thank you. Are you standing on my foot? Yeah. Ask, ask me to show you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Okay, so continuing to concentrate on this people area. Today, I'd arrange for the learning and development manager from Coca-Cola Wakefield to come and talk to you about the work we've done there, because I believe in this environment, the best people to hear these stories from are from the people who have to be benefiting from them. Steve's called away to a meeting, so unfortunately, I'm going to try my best to go through this for, for him. So Coca-Cola Enterprises is the, uh, the largest Coca-Cola bottling plant in the world, is in Wakefield in West Yorkshire, up until three years ago, I didn't know that. <coughs> now, on that site, they're employing some 650 people, with 450 of those people actually on continental shifts, three on, three off. Uh, they also manage the different parts of the, of the facility. There's manufacturing, there's the, the goods in the process first, manufacturing, bulk, break bulk of a local delivery service. They've got a lot of people making a lot of pop and a lot of people getting out of the back door and getting out of the loop. Now, <coughs> our involvement with them started after doing exactly what we've done, what Graham and I have just done here. We did this at a forum of HR people in Wakefield in my structure and uh, for the, for the uh, Regional Development Agency. And part of that uh, was talking about how we'd help use modern technology. This is the web-based don't make me think kind of approach within my Yorkshire police. And at the end of that, Steve came to me and he said, this, uh, this thing about an event where you've got this curve and you've got to get people in and out safely, could you turn that on its axis and actually put it down 12 production lines and help us uh, on our scheduling? Well, I wrote my role sales, so of course I said yes, uh, as you'd expect. And what this challenge was workforce flexibility. They had a finite amount of people employed to run that facility. And when that finite resource wasn't available, the first thing that they did was they brought people in on overtime. Overtime in Coke is like two or three times the rate. And they also used to use agency people. So at any one time, they could have 10%, 15% of their workforce could be agency staff on the site, which, is, which again has a cost me. So what we did was, we worked very closely with Steve because the first thing that he said is we need, in order to stop, prevent our line stopping, we need to make sure we've always got the right person, the right place, with the right and current skills uh, to deliver a resource requirement to meet our public demand. That was the challenge that we faced. Um, this is an interesting thing. The HR system had none of the skills matrix in there. It didn't manage the skills. <coughs> their training base, their database, a huge office with several people in there managing all this was entirely paper based. So team leaders and line managers were managing this information in their head. They knew that Steve could press that button at that time to make that thing work. And when, when the line manager wasn't there with that knowledge, it fell apart. So lines were actually stopping. An hour's stoppage of a line in Coca-Cola can cost them £100,000. a lot of money. So what we did was we started a skill flexibility project, went into consultation, we looked at their business start to finish to see how the information needs to flow through there. We found the people who were managing this manually in Excel, and we started to lift it out of Excel and put it into an intranet application. Okay, what that system did, I, again, I'm, I'm not here specifically talking about my software today, it's a case of how you can use technology to, uh, to deliver these kinds of services. In the case of most companies, people are using Excel to deliver this because Excel is a desktop. It's there. Because it's there, we use it. If you've got the expertise to use Access or the expertise to use Microsoft Project, then people will go away and start to do that in those environments. So I'm not particularly saying that the internet is the only way to do this. I'm saying that if you take it from a manual information and you start to automate it, those benefits can actually be significant. In their facility, they've got 12 lines, and depending on what they're running on the line, whether it's Coke Zero or Fanta or whatever it might be, it actually it changes because of the process and the material, the, the, the recipe and what's going in there. So the lines flex, and those lines can flex on a shift two or three times. It's a very dynamic environment. Equally, there's two lines in there that produce 2,000 uh, cans of coke a minute. And all they do all year round is produce 2,000 cans of coke a minute. But that line still needs to be managed and planned for. One of the things that they're very interested in at, um, in coke was uh, labour cost reporting by shift. One of the key performance indicators, which is hourly monitored in their business, is cost per case. How much does it cost to put that case of 24 cans of pop into the warehouse? and they monitor it very, very closely indeed. Okay, so, when we engage with the business, 
We took their business logic, the way that they were working, and we delivered a system that within nine months delivered a saving of £625,000 on their agents labour bill. In the first year, it saved just over a million pounds, and that's on a £20 million labour bill. So there were significant changes. And that was completely attributed, I'm not, I'm not going through all these points, but that was um, attributed just because they reduced the time of people running around with spreadsheets, people picking the phone, and people panicking about bringing people in. This system actually made automatic requests into an aid, their agency system to bring resources when they needed agency. In January 2009, for the first time in 20 years at that plant, there was no agency resource being used on site directly because of what we've done for them. And one of the major success, the last point at the bottom of this uh, slide, is that for me, as somebody coming into your business to look at how you manage business information, the major success for me was the team leaders used to fight on the morning when they came in for resource. They used to quibble. It was, it was a challenge to get the right people in the right place. What the team leaders started doing was they started logging into this system from home the day they came on site. When they came on site, they worked collaboratively and they meet the output demand. And that, for me, as, a, as an internet guy, was a major benefit. So, what our systems do is they don't make, it, you don't need to think, if you are a manager, you come in, see your screen, see your digital dashboard, then it, that tells you what you need to go next in your business to meet output demand. It does significantly reduce training time. One of the big uh, problems that I see in many companies is that they'll say, they'll have an ERP system, but then they'll be using crystal reports for generating all the reports. But in order to use Crystal Report, it's a five-day residential course. It's a very big investment in time. So because we significantly reduced the training time and costs, it, it was then rolled into other sites in the UK. And they're now telling us that using our system has, has literally taken millions and millions of pounds off their production costs in the UK. And the technology that we use enables rapid application development. And when we deliver a system, that system is owned by you. It's your software, you own it. And if our relationship breaks down in the future, you take that away and you continue to develop it. And it the main advantages of what we do often is that it's, in, it's independent of internal IT. Yeah, because I find in businesses, the internal IT seems to be there for its own benefit rather than the benefit of the rest of the business. That's just, just my experience. The one thing that we've started to do in the Coke business now, we've been engaged for over two years, is this labor demand layer that we put in there, we've started migrating other manual information systems into that platform. We're now talking to facilities uh, maintenance and, uh, and plan maintenance. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and doing things that up until now they've been doing intensely uh, manually. Have a good time. So over the last um, 15 years of my career, these are some of the organisations <coughs> that have been fortunate enough to put systems in to improve the way they manage, share, and report information within their business. <coughs> Any questions? Any questions? Okay, in that case, thank you very much.